that thing, I want you to stretch out your hand to pray for the medium the Lord is using. Pray that the Lord will give all trans of the throne of grace. Because by the arm of flesh can no man prevail. Pray that the Lord will speak the word in line with his will and purpose for this gathering today. The glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I don't know if you know this song, I want you to join me. Because everything, the one of us says, all things work out for good. Today we are going to look at a particular topic that has already started manifesting. And that talks about the benefits of the Lord. I don't know if you have been to an interview and you start asking them what are the benefits. I mean, who has ever gotten a job and you see your appointment letter and they say, at the end of the month, we'll just give you a presidential handshake. If you go for such interview, what will you do when you get home? You'll we'll come for prayer points. But that's what the Lord told me. That was around 2014. He said, I have benefits for every child of mine. But people are not asking me for them. He said, you just went there. Have you asked me about your wedding gift? I don't want to say, God, they carry wedding gifts. Come for people, Lord. Amen. So this evening, I want to encourage us because the Lord is saying something today. And he told me while I was meditating on this. He said, ask my people. They may not want to come out to testify. But let people take a minute or two and look backwards from the first time they came to the knowledge of the Lord and think of what the Lord has done so well. So I want you to do that in an exercise, just two minutes. Think about what the Lord has done for you. Itemize them, speak them out in your heart. Just say thank you, just begin to, don't ask for anything, but just to itemize the benefits you, you've gotten from this most high God. They don't see the 
good thing when they happen. Amen. I said, God will not give us that kind of mindset. God will not put us so down, such that we will forget that there is a greater purpose for which He called us unto. And we keep looking at the little things. But the man had that mindset that this morning will solve even more challenges, more evil, will solve a lot of problems. But then there was something he did. The first son who was a two, two one material, mechanical engineer in essence, but because he hasn't gotten a job, was seen as a mofer. So when the young man wanted to enter the house, the father locked the door and said, No, no, no. Father, he will send the second son. And this one is already. It's already what? Settled after a suit, no job. Say with two dollars, young men went into the market and started buying Okrenka gin. People were searching for money in Okrenka, buying pockets, buying bags. And I'm telling you that that made a lot of hearts to go off. People that were holding on to God felt that it is better for me to go and start selling Okrenka so that before people buy, I will search. Amen. Poverty mentality. Say to your neighbor, the Lord has given you a mind of Christ. Do not limit yourself. God has great benefits for every one of us. But there is a purpose. And that purpose is that you will walk with Him. You will walk with Him. Now, last time when we had the meeting, Pastor Lacken, he said, walking with the Lord now is not about following Him or becoming a fellow. And he showed us an example of someone walking with the Lord as a follower. As you are walking, and then God is before you, you are following, you are talking. And another person comes in between and intercepts. You know, before the Lord comes back, I will ask, God always has, even the, uh, the creatures has eyes all over. But then he's just trying to show, someone is walking and somebody obstructs you. You see, but if you are a fellow and God is holding you close, it makes it easy for him to know even the temperature of your body. When I came to Jesus' Lord, I had a teaching. I said, you will come to the knowledge of God up to the level that even before you go out, you start asking God, which God should I wear? Is someone still doing that here? Amen. Amen. That was what I heard in this ministry. You want to go like and say, Father, should I enter this tricycle or a vehicle? Should I enter? He says, that is when that relationship becomes what? Something that has taken substance. And I started working with it. I would stay at home on that adoption. They would rush with me. I tell my friend that brought me. I said, let's wait. God will bring the tricycle to us. I said, hey, God, Father, we are standing. The tricycle will come. And by the time we will come, it will come like the man will just come. will carry us gently. And we will meet up with work. So what am I trying to say? People share testimonies. You are sitting down. You have a lot of things the Lord is doing. You may not have itemized them, and that is why you are struggling to understand that God is what faithful and able to deliver. And that is why, as a person, you go to a place, people start to talk about a lot of things. I was in my community, we were talking about how they want to go to reconsider the words of our forefathers that somebody said it was because they took away the idols, that that is why things have started going so wrong. And, amen. That's what the youths are doing this, as I'm telling you the reality. The Lord is saying, talk to the youths. They are going back, and they say, in the neighboring community. And they say, those people we are seeing in that neighboring community, sorry to use the word, they are more of little drugs. And then they say, like the, uh, they, they are, they are, God is helping them to succeed, and they are making money and coming back. So I called my other brother, I said, you are my first brother, and now my dad is late. But let me tell you my condition. I am not joining on anything about reconsidering or doing anything. So, if you are making a decision, you can take for your household. But eventually, you say, no. He started telling them, you are missing out on something. I now told them, that is what my father saw, that made him, when you people called and said, initiate this and into the mass grave, he said, never. My first brother was actually initiated, but me, my dad said, never. My last second brother, I said never. The third one said never. Then I grew up and I wanted to participate in the KG. And they said, You are not initiated. You are not. I took the word to my father. I was in SS3. You know how it is with SS3 boys. I said, That team, you must make me to join the master. The man said, Is it that you decide to continue school or you can't watch your master of your own? It was so 
I was so angered that he took my uncle to come and calm me down. And then he told me some little things I can say. If I, but I should go now. They know my father. He's as stubborn as I am. So two of us will rather not worry over this. So go. If anybody is told me, tell them that look at who you should come eat. But I now remember that my dad did that because he knows of the benefits the Lord has put in the way for me. So when the Lord tells you something, he takes you back to your history. You know that. And when I came to the full knowledge of the Lord, and I became aware that my name is actually defined in true, not defined in. The same people call the family my usual is common. And so these days, people rather not call their people, their children, the family. You know, a lot of names. But there is something attached to it, the family to what the Lord said. It is in the Bible, Luke 137. He says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. When I go to all of that scripture, eh, I personalize it. I internalize I it. I chewed on it. I got married because of the family to me. I wanted because of Ifani Chuku. I'm working because of Ifani Chuku. And when I gave birth to a son, I said, God, I will name somebody Ifani Chuku. Let us continue for every generation so that all over the earth people will know that with God, nothing is impossible. That is what the Lord said I should encourage you this night. Are you on that crossroad thinking of what to do next? Remember, you can never go to a place that will be better than the presence of the Lord. And so, you have to walk with him. Walk. It is future, present, continuous. It doesn't have a time frame. The scripture says, clearly, praise be the Lord. Praise be the Lord who takes pleasure, you know, in the prosperity of his children. So, as you want to put your best in work, you want to give your best in your working place, so that you will be entitled to your retirement benefits. Amen. I was somewhere yesterday and they were talking about some lecturers that have died at Ignatius Andrew and they said some of them, somebody was wondering how someone that has been a professor for 14 years doesn't have maybe a million to save so that during this strike a lot of things came upon them and then some of them started giving up and I said, he said no, the problem is not actually making money but also having the will to save that you may make more and save less but someone makes little and saves more and I told them it's not about making money, little or less it's also about grace. It's about the grace God has given you. There is someone here that will carry a lot of problems on his or her head and solve them as much as possible. And somebody else will carry that same problem, even with MC in the house, in the car, everywhere. It will be that we will gather to pray again. I'm telling you the reality. So the measure of grace which you have been given is what you need to ask the Lord to direct you. I want you to go to... Um, Ephesians 1 verse 9. Amen. Yes, we are moving at the speed of light because after now God is rocketing people to places of settlement. Amen. You know that song? The Lord punished me. He directed me on something. The song they say, Jesus said to Lord. Jesus said to Lord. I know you used to sing it before. Because I said about Jesus so boy that he will settle you. But today, the Lord is telling me He is a God that does what settles His people. Settling is not giving you financial money for you to go. He settles you at peace with Him. He settles your mind to focus on Him. When you come to fellowship, you don't finish fellowship and you go home and you look at the walls of your house and you start thinking, "Any name will be God the one." Amen. The priest once said that people come to church, they come with a bag, small bag of challenges or problems that they want to keep for the Lord. And as they finish them, they say, drop your petitions, your request. As they drop it, by that they are going back, they go back to that door and say, Jesus, I beg, can I pray in that one? Walk up my man. Let me still carry my bag. Jesus, I'm carrying the bag. Whenever it goes, I will know. Amen. He says, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself. There's something good about the Lord. That's good pleasure. Somebody say, good pleasure. Good pleasure. He said, I made you. He made us in his image and likeness. And he has revealed to us. He said, before you were formed, I know you. Even Jeremiah wanted to give an excuse. See, I'm a youth. God said, keep quiet. What kind of youth are you? Look at me telling you something and saying you are a youth. 
Jesus said to what Peter, cast your nets. And Peter started to complain. Nah, since four years graduation, no job. All the men that has come across me, what are you saying? When I was about getting married, I believe I had the opportunity to go to a lot of churches. One, what my father told me, a woman takes you to a church, she will take you to a native doctor tomorrow if you are not careful. So go by yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not castigating women, but I'm just telling you what my father told me. So there was, there was this good friend, I was in SEM, Student Christian Movement. She was also in SEM. So she said, you are a with every time you see. Let's go to the mountain of fire. I remember what my father said. The first time, I said, if I follow her now, I don't know, next time, when she said, let's go to Baba Alhambra, I don't know what I will say. But after two days, this, I went the last time, I joined them, and I was going, I had to tell my younger brother, I said, Chema, please, I'm going with my aunt to Martin. Say, ha, if you are going, make sure you don't stay in the front seat. That's it. If you stay in the front seat, they will notice you a new member and they will use prayer and finish you. I said, why? He said, because the way they fled is their fault. And I applied the wisdom of my younger brother and I went to the back. Because, you know, the we are not used to that. So I said, I beg, eh? I'll go to the back. So, but what happened? They shared the greatest one that has not left my mind. You see, there was a lady that has been believing God for a life partner, talking about the benefits of the Lord. And this young lady, somebody said, I mean this, I was saying, and today God is releasing one man to people. She said, Amen, no. Praise the Lord. And you see, afterwards, she committed suicide. She committed suicide. Because she counted three months after the release or whatever. There was something assurance that the friend gave her. You know, just like you bring somebody to come for the life and spirit experience with God, and you say, when you come, the Lord will visit you. I mean, when I came to Jesus' God, the young uh, you know, mom's wife was the one that invited my friend Collins, who invited me. So when I came, and I said, uh -huh, I don't reach where God will settle me. Because when I saw progress, and I saw, I said, God, I started using my eyes to check where my own car would be parked. <laughs> Say, yeah, the best. Oh, yeah. That was what I was admitting the first time. I'm making a confession. Amen. But I'm trying to justify why the Lord said it's a walk. I stayed first for two months, three months. There was a time when I said, I'm not going for fellowship again. I said, wait, let me. Do you know what brought me back? The woman thinks that I stopped coming. I said, you know, we used to go for this place. There's also a place out there. Once you say that a place is something I hated to hear. All this woman and I hated it. You know, so but when I came here, I met uh, Pastor Phil, and I was in tears. He prayed and said, the Lord said, calm down. Calm down. I want to heal you. I want to finish with you first. The Lord is interested in making you to conform to his will. He's more interested in your heart than your Perfect. I mean, your wealth. Because Jesus did not want the bread of his head. Amen. 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 So the same thing the Lord told me, what I'm sharing with you, He is interested in your walk with Him on that road and journey. You have to remember one thing as you are walking on that road. If you are in Christ, you are a righteous being. And the Word of God says in Proverbs 4, verse 18, that your path shall be like a light that shineth brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So, if you are walking with the Lord, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His will, what a glory He sheds on our way. It means that you must continue the walk. There is no retirement for you to be attained to the benefits of the Lord. No. You may be at the level where you have some, God has given you sufficiency. He 
your finances. But there will also be wisdom in how to use those finances, such that, as the Lord says, what to him that does not leave an inheritance for his children, you will not end up not leaving an inheritance. Just like the adult man I met at two, the children were having a lot of challenges that he started selling his houses, small, small, every evening he would take two bottles of gold and that's what he was doing with the money. He said, this should have taken something is still there, nothing is there. I'm drinking it down, let me eat it before I go. And I said, wow. Well, that is what the children, some of them were doing that their father has, they don't know that the, young, the, the, the man has taken a decision. That is what we are talking about the benefits. The benefits will be that God will sustain your children in such a way that Whatever he's blessing you with, it will be up to the sixth generation. There will not be any way that it will drop off on the wayside. That could be your prayer point this night. I know the Lord has given us that wisdom, that spirit of utterance for us to speak things into existence. That is, you let you know that God deals up a person. It doesn't mean that God cannot bless you instantaneously. God has more than ability. That is why when people say, receive. I speak money into your account. There's a, 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 a pastor in Rwanda or so that he commands, as we are here now, cash will come. He will carry them home. He's from Nigeria. Paul Kagame gave him a, a what is it called? Personal non character when he became the president. But it was real. People were going there. How many young men would go to that place and come to Jesus' Lord? And then you want them to come back the next day. If they don't understand that God is interested in that work. I say you are working, God is talking with you. He's changing you. He's reinvigorating you. He's refocusing you. He's telling you, leave the spirit of hustling. Hustling is a sin. Forget it all. You hustle so much that you don't even know when you have gotten to the place of blessing. That's why they say, if a thief comes to a place, even in heaven, he may still be looking around, thinking he has not arrived. <laughs> why? Because he came to a door. He's not known to using a door to come into a place. So when he comes, why the angels lead him? He'll be like through the window, how did I get in there? So you may think I have a man with that family because you'll be so much interested in what you gain that you will not understand that God has actually put you at a place of rest and where he's taking you, reforming you, refining you, keeping your focus more. I want someone to quickly look at James 1 verse 4 to 5. Let's understand that in this work there is something we need when we are working with the Lord in the light of his word. There is something we surely need. James 1. Amen. It says, let perseverance be patient, but let patience have its perfect work. I wish I could see the translation that said, said let perseverance finish its work. Amen. And I, yes. It says, let perseverance, because whenever you mention patience, Christians lose focus on it. They say, my name is not patient. Perseverance must. It is what? A conditional statement. Must. Amen. This is James talking. He said, perseverance. By the power of the Holy Spirit, must finish his work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. What does it mean here? Not lacking anything is more financial what? But as an elder in the church, as someone that has been with Christ for five years, can you advise another person that has come into the knowledge of the Lord? You know, there is someone that says, I'm going through a challenge now. I don't know what to do, I don't know how to go about it. Can you actually advise that person so that the person will remain with Christ in the next 15 years? That is what the Lord is interested in. He is building this church. It is through individuals. He calls you. You call another person. He builds you. You build the other person. The other person builds the other person. Such that when you call young men, we had a lot of persons that uh, in LSG, when they say, in fact, to encourage people to marry, you can even help wherever it is, do small, small things, support. A lot of persons came because of it. Actually, the God man will support them. And then some of them walk close by. When you go and check, you say, uh, I will come next week. I will come next week. Now, it would have been better that they were still coming and they were still fellowshipping with us so that they can also build up the younger ones that are also in that place of 
discontentment about how do I settle in? How do I get this dowry? How do I get this bright price? And I'm telling you a point that God has put up. He said, if God is giving me grace, if I become the president, I'll close list for marriages. I will close this for marriages. What I want to close is what the Bible says, dowry. It means it is between the father and the mother of the child and the other family. I'm not talking of what I'm saying, list is go on now. There's some list that they give you. You go back two times. Amen. They gave me a list. I told my in law, prospective in law, I thought to a believer, I don't take out for all of us. Why am I saying that? You know, he said, don't worry, just go and uh, negotiate with them. Amen. But that, um, that is not what the Lord is interested in. The Lord is interested in the prosperity of his children. That prosperity is even in marriage, in school, in every, the several mountains, the areas of influence you find yourself. The Lord is saying, you have to prosper in that place so that people will know that I am a God that blesses. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, he that comes to God must come believing that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently, diligently seek him. Psalm 34 verse 10 says, even young lions go hungry, but those that seek the Lord lacks nothing good. The word there is good. So does it mean that Vincent in a place you want to, you know, pray that someone, one man came for an interview and said, I know that the last accountant has died, so you cannot tell there is no vacancy. Is that the type of prayer I want to say as a Christian? Yes, the man of God shared how God called people, five persons, widows, say, come and pray. The Lord is giving you free words, blank tickets. God has located you people and is going to put you to his benefits. So he said, come and pray for what is the heart, your heart desire. And the Lord called the man of God, say, go close. One person is praying and this. And when? He went, he had to listen into the prayer. And the woman was saying, Chineke, what God of man was it? I mean, the thing amazed the man. God said, Come and pray. God is giving you a ticket to ask him what you want. And you're saying, Remove a man, does it? So he asked him, What the, who is the man? Does, what the man does? He said, Oh, then I know you're going back. I am alive. <laughs> Poverty mentality. Oh, then I know you're going back. I am alive. That's the woman that doesn't allow her to sell in the line. This one sells better than her. So God should move her. So the man said, which way will God move her? He said, anywhere God wants. Now, he asked, if God makes her to die, will you be happy? That was when she understood the extent of what she was asking. God, move her. How will you move someone? Instead of praying that God will open your ways, open your own business, so that you also sell well and train your children. I think that was what the Lord was looking at. And that was why God wanted the man of God to go and direct her prayers so that she won't miss that. And if tomorrow God has started blessing others, he will say, Ah, Papa, you check out Is it not all of us that we are called? But many we are called, few we are chosen. But I want to encourage you. You may not have started seeing my car, may not have passed here, but I can see them in the spirit realm. Yes, amen. And that is the same encouragement. You must always visualize where God is taking you to. God hates people that don't have visions. That's why I say, he that has a vision, let him run with it. Amen. God is purifying everybody. He is purifying every Christian to learn the ways of the kingdom and the principles. So it may be that he's taking you through the purification process. Making you to be like gold. But in all this, I want you to know something. Romans 8, verse 28 says, All things work out for good. Romans, can someone put it there? But nothing can separate us from the love of God as well. But all things work out for good. Let us quickly see that. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. I will have been called according to his purpose. Amen. It's a scripture that I want everyone to hold on to. It's the hand of God in what you are going through. That time of wilderness experience, have you asked to know whether it's the will of God? Yes, some things may be man-made. Some things may be actually your own cause. 
But whatever you are going through, as a Christian, the first thing, which is why our quiet time is very paramount. And the woman said he never went to a Bible school, but he caught all the knowledge he had by spending 16 hours reading the Bible every day. Now, who am I? 16 hours, yes. And that's why he wrote the book, Effortless Change. You see, the word of God is like a seed. If you take it and hold on to it and meditate, just hold on to the word of God. You say, if I don't read a lot of other books, but the word of God, holding on to it, meditating until it becomes flesh in him. And that is where he starts to understand that Proverbs 30 verse 5, that's the scripture the Lord gave me in a special day that made me to remember my name. And that is what I want to share with you. You must remember your name today. If you don't remember, if your name has nothing to do with the Bible, mean that you are born. <laughs> they do another spiritual mapping of names. Amen. If he doesn't have a link, I didn't say if he doesn't mean anything, if he doesn't have a link. Every word of God is what? That's just the word. Every word of God is pure. Growing up in Enugu, you know, God uses the things that you have used for. There are some things you will do. One will play football, play very well, someone will say pure. That is, is like correct, exact. So the Lord told me that his also words are also what? Pure. So if I am sick and I start holding on to the word by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. It is pure and it will come into effect. If I am believing God for money and I say that I know the Lord will supply my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, it will come into effect. If I am traveling and I go to Psalm 121 verse 8 and I say, For the Lord said, You will bless my going out and my coming in from this time forth and even forevermore, it will come into effect. Such that there was a day I was going to live with my family. Our boss left the road and started running the car through this. He was as boom, 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 boom. My wife opened the, opened the, this thing, jumped out. A lot of people were jumping. Me, I carried my small son. I sat down and I said, The Lord has told me. I will bless your going out and your coming in. So I'm not moving anywhere. After I opened the driver stayed in the car. People come and say, Oh, God, you don't even move. I say, Move, go where? God has told me, stay here. I say, Move. What if, like me, when you know, some people want to move like other people and then another, something else will happen. Our brother, Mecca, shared how when he was traveling back, he was in the plane, and the Lord has told him, I'm bringing him back to Nigeria safely. There was a turbulence. Turbulence such that though he moved, a lot of people were shaking. He didn't move. He was stated on the word of God. He said, Father, you have told me I bring you back to Nigeria. And I'm coming back. He said, after the whole state, the one white man said, Boy, you are strong. When he gave us a bottle of headache, he said, No, not about the headache. I'm telling you about the grace of God. The man said, Get us two bottles of headache. This strong man is very, he didn't move. He said, I am telling you about what God has told you. The man said, Oh, God is wonderful then. God will use you to make people to testify to his greatness. Now, God is purifying you so that you won't be like those that put their trust in their riches. 1 Timothy 6 verse 17. For it will be an admiration that a Christian had money and later ends up losing his soul. Even Christ cautioned against this in Mark 8 verse 36 when he said, What shall it profit a man? Amen. What shall it profit a man if he gets the whole world and loses his own soul? Command those who are rich in this present age not to be hot, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly, richly, and I want richly. Amen. I, I, I'm a Catholic and I've told somebody in my area that nobody calls me, listen to the poor, listen to the poor. Last year I told him I'm no longer listen to the poor, I'm listen to the rich. <laughs> you say, is there a sense like that? I say, I don't want to know. Why do you say, the rich? Because it's not like you say, you're poor, you say, you're poor. You know, I said, don't, so you change it. He says, I'm listen to the rich. I say, yes. You are dead. Yes. Change your mindset. That's what I say, change your mindset. It is well, though. Oh. Uh -huh. Some people say that, man. Pastor Zoma said we shouldn't be using that. It is well, though. Oh. It's either it is well or it is not. Amen. 
So God wants us to be rich and also to make heaven, especially that's the main thing, to make heaven. If you look at Mark 10, verse 29 to 30, you see how Jesus spoke about this to his uh, disciples. Mark 10, 29 to 30. He says, So Jesus answered and said, I show them that I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels, that is, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, but that with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. That's the eighth thing, eternal life. Eternal life, that's what Jesus is interested in more. But he's saying, even as of now, you will gain more than what you have always taken or you have thought that you may not gain. If you leave your village meeting and you come for Sunday fellowship and you are thinking about some people, why is it that they always think about one people that will bear? Amen. Amen. We are saying that we will live in a time when we will have the abundance of the Lord in the land of the living. In, in, in John 10, verse 10, Amplified, it says that you will also, Jesus said, you will have life, enjoy life, live life to the fullness of it until it what? Uh, amen. That's brother Matthew's favorite Put, 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 put up the scripture. John 10, 10, Amplified. Okay. Amen. No, there is one that says, until life overflows. The translation, that's okay. Okay, you can, you can see, my purpose, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a, life, a rich and satisfying life. I want to tell you something the Lord told me this morning. Talking about wealth, richness, everything, and it is as if people are prospering. I mean, that's not what the Lord is saying. He's saying to you that in the situation you are in, can you have joy without Him? Without Jesus, can you have joy? When you go home, like our sister shared, and the landlord comes and starts saying, Your rent is due. When you come and the next morning they call you and say, Your children's fees are due in school, and they will not be allowed to be example. Will that joy of the Lord still be your strength? But there is something the Lord says you should learn how to do. You should learn how to declare things. You should learn how to pray things into being. Not by being silent and by giving signs. Sir, your dues, your rents are due to mm. Can you say, Father, I thank you because I've received the money I need to pay my children's house rent? What? I don't know what I see or somewhere that somebody shared that the children were sent to the house and to go back to school. That the school doesn't know the children of those that send people. That these are children of ministers of uh, economy. And the children went back and said, That is a we should say uh, that he is a, his father is a minister of economy, so why should they send them out? <laughs> Meanwhile, as they were doing that, uh, that made the teacher to call the administrator or the person, and the man now spoke with the father said, Yes, I know that I want to make that open talk, so leave those children. Speak with you. Know, <laughs> it's not a bed, go a bed, a bed. As you are begging, they say, sir, can you step out of the gate first? <laughs> know who you are. Because you know that when you talk to your father, he will answer you. We, we trivialize Matthew 7, 7. The Lord says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened up to you. He ended by saying, even those being evil know how to give good things to their children. What of he, our heavenly father? You pray for your daily needs. Don't you know that every day you need to pray for house rent? It's part of your daily need. That's the same thing God is giving you, your daily need. He said, give us this day our daily bread. How many bread will you eat in a day? The bread is things that will sustain you for that day. Your house rent for the day, school fees, the money to transport, so that you won't trek and become a journey walker. The Lord is taking care of you. So that is why he said, pray, ask me, ask. Sometimes we do not receive because we do not ask. If you follow Jesus, love him and do what he says. As contained in the Logos, the word of God. And in your Rema. How many of us still remember our Remas? 
what the Lord has revealed to us. If you still remember your Rema, the Lord is saying, reactivate it. Use it to talk to me. The Lord says, I will make you a blessing to others. The Lord says, I will make you the prayer. I will make you a prayer warrior that people will be turned to God through you. And you are not seeing it happening because you have stopped worrying with it. Pray with your Rema. Use the word of God, the Bible. Every word of God is pure. And it is spirit branded. It is good for everything you need in life. So as you do your quiet time, you must have something you have picked from the scripture for the day that you will pray into existence. Amen. But I want to add something. As you do that, you need to as well try to make out a day of thanksgiving. It's a tradition in my home that maybe Saturdays, no, no prayer requests. I'm praying my children. Saturdays are not for what? Prayer requests. It's for thanking God for the week so far. Father, thank you for this. Thank you. It's always thanks. Amen. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Because the, 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 the need to pray has crept into the Christian faith so much that every prayer now becomes a personal prayer. Let us pray for that brother. This brother is believing God. He wants to travel abroad. That person there remembers that too says, Me, I want to to, I want to go that abroad. So as you are praying for that brother, he's praying for himself. The, the, the prayer is now disconnected. Maybe that person traveling about is someone that God wants the prayer to become an edge so that he will not go there and run into a challenge. But the person leaves that particular prayer for it and starts to pray his own or her own need. Because every opportunity to pray is an opportunity to bring your own petition. Amen. In Tassessos, I know that you have been doing a great work and the Lord is saying this is the season to take it further. Because we cannot stay in Nigeria and a lot of things are going wrong. The Lord is encouraging us to take care of our prayer needs now. 2023 is around the corner. What do you want to see happen? Start now to take charge of that. Start to pray into that. Start to speak the word of God upon that situation. We cannot be quiet anymore. We cannot be quiet anymore. Amen. David says he has never seen the righteous forsaken on his seat begging bread. Psalm 37, verse 25. That is what the Lord is bringing to that. He said, I now, once I was young, now I'm old. So in all his years, he has never. That's David talking. And that is why when you talk about God, David will dance, will shout, will do a lot of things. Because he has known this God they are talking about. He has touched. Psalm 118, I believe, verse, um, he says, Test and see that the Lord is good. Last night, God was telling me about it. It's not just test as T A S T. It's also Somebody is T E S T C and T C. So even if you want to test him, no problem. But you still want to see that he is good. Amen. So we will be encouraged to cast our cares on the Lord, for in him alone is all things complete. First Peter 4, verse 7. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Needs cannot only be physical, there are spiritual needs. The fruits of the Spirit, the Lord promised us in Galatians 5, 22. Now, these are things that the Lord wants to see manifest in His church. That there will be what? The outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that the church can move as a triumphant body to conquer all these challenges that we are seeing. The devil in the church as of now. Amen. You see, now the problem may be, what is the challenge why we are not clearly seeing these benefits? We may have grown familiar with God and we have become complacent. Are you here? Do you still doubt that God can take care of you? Who is the person that thinks his problem is bigger than God here? Who is the person that thinks that the, the prospects, not only problem now, that your prospects then are bigger than God? If you are here, the Lord is encouraging you. There is nothing. There is nothing. Even the people of Israel of old, they doubted. And that was why he said, since they can't ask me, tell them I will not give them a sign. A friend will conceive and bear a child. Amen. Because the people have stopped asking. Say, who can you weary me? You cannot weary God. In this assembly, we cannot weary God. In our homes, we cannot weary God. God is still in the habit of answering prayers. His ears are too wide that you cannot fill them with your own request. But you must pray in line with his will and purpose. Amen. 
Please. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. Now, that's a forest picture, and that's what I want to use to round off. Because there are expectations from the Lord upon us. The expectations for us to keep being, to keep reaping, to keep enjoying the benefits of the Lord. The Lord, by His divine power, God, Amen. We may not finish this scripture here, but I want to, when you go, read it again. Pray thanks. It's an assignment. Even if I'm not here, the one majority will be marking those that will come. Three times, you mark it. Because I'm the one sharing. If nobody completes it, I'll take permission of the leading servant. I will, will stay outside. As you come, did you read it three times? Say yes, oh man, that you have three times. <laughs> God, by His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. But since we have received all of this by coming to know Him, so it means you must have that personal knowledge of the Lord. You must have made Him your Lord and Savior. So you come to His full knowledge and then you start to enjoy some of this pain. A lot of this pain, there are too many to mention. Everyone in this Bible is a benefit that the Lord has given unto His children. Amen. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means. Amen. Well, this man said we have to put the H in the capital. That's the thing I'm noticing. They did us. Who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Okay, go to verse 3, verse 4. God has called us. He has called us to come and fellowship with him. We fellowship with the Lord, we walk with Him, and as we walk with Him, the things that He has in stock for us, He starts to renew them for us. We now take them and put inside our pockets. As the Lord prays, you pick every one that is shared on Sunday that touches you. You pick it, put it in your prayer book, put it in your bank, your spiritual bank, and walk with it, and walk with it. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. Jesus never lacked anything when he was on walking the earth. He wanted to have a last supper. He told them, go to Charity Hotel and arrange something there for me. Uh -uh. When the people thought that this man had done food for they said, okay, let him pay tax. They thought they had caught him, but he doesn't carry money around. He doesn't carry money what? around. So that people will not follow him because of what they are going to get from his pocket. He, he, he has an ATM. Yes. So he said, Peter, go, get what? The first fish there. Just give them this money. They should know that I am all sufficient God. I will you lay back. Jehovah over two. Why will you tempt me with money? But he said, go and prepare a place in Sheraton. I'm telling you, I went to Sheraton when I went for an interview. They said, okay, you people give me a boy. I saw one white man. This boy was taking coke. I said, let me give you a light. Give me coke. As the boy wanted to open the coke, I said, at the African man first. Sorry, how much? You say 500, I say 500. You say yes. That was almost like my transport bag. So, I purposely held the cup of the drink. I said, okay, hold on, hold on. Yep, the seminar has started. Oh, so sorry, sorry, just. Wisdom is profitable to direct. The one of us said, if you like, if any man asks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. If you can open that drink, DSS, because I have to know that I will need to drink for 500. Because I'm in Sheraton. Amen. But these days I have come to the knowledge that, Amen. That you have not escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Please continue. You escape the corruption, but also for this very reason, giving all the riches. See what you need to add now. That's where I want us to note. The things the Lord has, especially after having the knowledge of the Lord, after having been brought close to Him, He's asking you to add to your faith. That faith you have. Because without faith, you cannot please God. That's the prerequisite. First one, you have faith and believe that Jesus is the Son of God, came to die for you. You bring that faith in words, you personalize it, then you start to move on. After your faith, add virtue. To your virtue, you add knowledge. Because the one of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you must seek out knowledge and add it. To knowledge, self-control. What does self-control mean? Okay. 
that the Lord has given me someone I look up to. When I have money, I'm not buying anything anyhow. I must think well because I don't want my children the next 40 years, even my fourth generation, they will be upon me. I will have to think very well if I invest. To knowledge, self control. To self control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, godly kindness. And to godly kindness, love. Everything is all encapsulated in this. What you need to add to that knowledge of the Lord you have. So that, continue, so that you will not just be stagnant in the Lord. Say, for if these things are yours and are bound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. If you don't want to be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, then you need to take these things, personalize them, and make them part of your scriptural reference for every day until it becomes part of your existence. That, amen, this is what the Lord expects of me. Do you know that David did something like this? There's a time David took stock and said, Lord, if I never stayed in the castle, a lot of things, he says, take my hand, if I have ever. David said those things. Remember, if I ask you, you remind me the place in the scripture, but let me not ask you. But there was a time I was in Abba, one pastor said, Can somebody in this church say this thing? Now, he said, Beat you, nobody. He said, There was a man that he asked this question four years ago, a man answered. And that, this, he says, This man is still in the church. He said, I'm here, but there's something you added that was not there in the last thing. He said, No, the scripture is the same. There's nothing I have added. So I'm asking us and encouraging us in this season, let us hold on to the Lord. Let us remember His word. Let us hold, especially unto this scripture, Second Peter 1 from verse 3 downwards. Apart from verse 1, now you see what the Lord is telling you about how to remain fruitful, how to abound in love, how to yield great fruits. Fruitfulness in the Lord means bringing more souls to the Lord. Fruitfulness in the Lord means that as you bring the soul to the Lord, the soul is about going and you say, there, I know they don't have transport. Okay, pick this up minus for transport. But if you tell the person, he said, I don't get that transport. Maybe next week the person was not thinking of if I come again, I don't have transport. How would it happen? So these are the things the Lord blesses his people so that in this church there will be no lack. If you need wisdom, there are people that are wise in the church. If are, you know, that is how the Lord works. Yours may not be that you have abundant money, but you have the wisdom that is needed to grow the body of Christ. You may have the perseverance to lead others in prayer, to encourage others, to build others together. Amen. Amen. So we want to bow down our head, even as we pray, that this world, that God is asking us somebody here, have you given up hope? Because the scripture says, hope deferred makes a heart sick. But this evening, the Lord is encouraging you to say, make Jesus Christ your hope. No matter what the Lord, no matter what the world throws on you, with Jesus, you will make it. With Jesus, you will succeed. With Jesus, you will come out unscathed. Because he said, if you pass through the fire, I am there with you. Jesus walks the walk with us. So I want you to just ask, Lord, in any way I may have lost hope, the only way that they have despaired, turn them around by the blood of Jesus. Let your best cleanse me. Keep me to be focused once again on you. And as I focus, may you richly bless me with all the virtues, with all the godliness, with everything that pertains to life and godliness. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. When we walk with that Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Away, when we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no one.